Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. We all know that reality TV is heavily produced and as Tatiana said, what you see isn't always the truth. And you all seem to love my previous videos where I exposed some backstage Drag Race production secrets, so I'm back with some more juicy secrets for you all. Today we're going to be talking about fake judges reactions, breaking boats, and hiding contestants. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. Fake songwriting. One of the most standard challenges on Drag Race is that in the final episodes, the queens usually have to write and record their own verses to one of RuPaul's songs. And although it should be pretty obvious that a lot of post-production work is involved to create these verses, it may surprise you to know how long it takes. Art Simone, who competed on Drag Race Down Under Season 1, recently shared some interesting behind-the-scenes tea about the finale verses on Drag Race. On her Drag Race review show, Kick-Ons, Art said that the queens have to write and record their verses several days, maybe even weeks, before the finale. And it all has to be sent to RuPaul's producer, because he's the only one who RuPaul trusts to work on his music. So this means that when they show the queens sitting down in the episodes and listening to the tracks and writing their lyrics, this is all fake, and the queens have in fact already written and recorded their tracks a long time before. Art also said that because the queens record it so far in advance, some queens write and record their tracks, but they don't end up making it to the finale because they get eliminated the next episode before the finale, so their tracks are never used. And this has been supported by other queens. For example, Tatiana said that she did write a verse for the song Reggie Wrote You for the All Stars 2 finale, but because Tatiana didn't make it to the finale, her verse was not used. And so Tatiana actually ended up using the lyrics for one of her songs on her own album so that the lyrics wouldn't go to waste. Breaking a Boat There have been some very unusual challenges on Drag Race over the years, and so it's probably no surprise that there have also been some behind-the-scenes mishaps as well. Well, Latrice Royale once spilled some interesting tea about the infamous boat challenge on season 4. You may remember that in episode 6, each queen was assigned a colour of the pride flag and had to decorate a parade boat in that colour. Well, Latrice Royale once spilled some very interesting backstage tea about this challenge during a podcast episode with Joey Nolfi of Entertainment Weekly. Latrice said that the producers brought in the boats for everyone, but they were all made to be the same size. But Latrice said that her boat didn't fit, and she said to the producers, quote, I can't squeeze up in this, not with my body on, I put on padding. And so, production had to take her boat away, and they had to break the boat up and rebuild it to be bigger. And this meant that while all of the other queens were decorating their boat, Latrice was just sitting there not able to do anything. Latrice then said that because she wasn't able to work on her boat while it was being rebuilt, production said that she could come in early the next day to work on her boat so that she could catch up, and Latrice described this as, quote, drama. Using Michelle's private bathroom. We've heard many stories over the years that the queens spend a long time filming and are often not allowed to go to the bathroom until filming has finished. And in fact, I have talked about this in previous videos, but queens such as Sasha Colby have previously admitted that they peed themselves on the main stage while filming. But what you may not know is that one queen once got to use a special private toilet that was just for one of the judges. In an interview on Maddie Morphosis's YouTube channel, Lawrence Cheney from Drag Race UK Season 2 said that she once got to use Michelle Visage's private toilet. Lawrence explained that during episode 4, the runway theme was Monster Mashup, and Lawrence was wearing a skin costume. Apparently, Lawrence knew that because the outfit was so difficult to get on, she couldn't get out of it to go to the bathroom, so she decided just to hold it in. However, the main stage critiques and the lip sync take around 3 hours or more to film, and by the end, Lawrence was desperate for the toilet. Also, that episode was the episode when Ginny Lemon unexpectedly walked out during the lip sync and quit the competition. 
And because this was unplanned, no one from production was there to greet Ginny when she walked off stage, and so she was apparently walking around backstage and production didn't know where she was. And this meant that all of the other queens, including Lawrence, were being held in a different room while producers were dealing with Ginny. Apparently, Lawrence said to one of the PAs that she needed to go to the bathroom urgently, but the PA said that they couldn't go until they were allowed to leave. And Lawrence apparently squatted and nearly peed and pooped herself and said that she needed to go to the toilet right away. Lawrence said that the PA grabbed her by the hand and because there wasn't enough time to get to the Queen's toilets, they went to these toilets that were very fancy and close by. Lawrence at first thought that it was RuPaul's toilet because they were so fancy, but she later found out that it was actually the toilet for Michelle Visage or the guest judge. And just as some bonus tea, Lawrence also admitted in the same interview that she felt sorry for the crew while filming her season because Lawrence admitted that she was apparently quote, quite difficult and was not very easy to deal with. And Lauren shared a story that in the first episode, Lawrence kept talking even though they were supposed to be on what's called hard ice, which means that the queens aren't allowed to talk when the cameras aren't rolling. But Lawrence wasn't taking it seriously and just kept talking. And a PA kept asking Lawrence to stop talking, but Lawrence just laughed and said, quote, Oh, but this is just fun, isn't it? But the producer apparently replied and said, quote, This isn't fun, this is your job. I'm a member of staff here, don't argue back. And Lawrence said that she was, quote, gagged because she had rightfully been told off. And then later that day, the PA said that they were ordering Nando's for dinner and they asked the queens what they wanted from the menu. And when the PA asked what Lawrence wanted, Lawrence just said, quote, I don't know, I'm on ice. And she wouldn't talk to the PA. And Lawrence joked that she didn't end up eating that night because she was being so petty and wouldn't speak to the PA. Hiding contestants. It's common knowledge by now that the contestants on Drag Race are not allowed to tell anyone that they are going to film the show. And once they arrive, the contestants are kept in their hotel rooms and are not allowed to leave or talk to anyone off camera. And they are also monitored by production staff, and this is to ensure that any drama or arguments get caught on camera. But there have been several times that queens have been hidden from other queens in order to stop their appearance on the show from being spoiled. For example, you may remember that on season 14 of Drag Race US, there was a split premiere over two episodes. And one queen was eliminated in each episode, but they were later brought back to the competition, namely Dia Betty and Orion Story. Well, Orion Story once spilled in an interview with Pressed Conference that she knew that she was going to be brought back and that the producers hid her from the other contestants. Orion was asked if she had to go all the way back home after filming her elimination, and Orion said she knew that she wasn't really going to be eliminated because they hadn't introduced the whole cast yet. But apparently when she was eliminated, the production assistants were really hamming it up and asking her if she was okay and whether she was disappointed to be eliminated first. But Orion told them that she knew that she wasn't really going to be eliminated, although the PAs completely denied knowing anything about it. And so Orion then had to film the part in the workroom where she was packing her suitcases and then got in the car to drive away. But then production told her that she was actually being kept in the competition and was coming back. Orion said she turned to the PA and said, quote, I effing knew it. And the PA admitted that they knew the whole time and they just had to lie. Orion also said that all of the Queen's rooms are on one floor of the hotel. But after her elimination, Orion was moved up to a different floor of the hotel so that no one would see that she had come back. And Orion had to stay there for five days until she was brought back to the competition in episode three because they film about two episodes per week, Monday through Friday, and then they have the weekends off in their hotel rooms. Orion was also apparently given a sewing machine to use in her hotel room during that time, which Orion admitted that she ended up stealing. Fake judges reactions. The judges are an integral part of Drag Race, and that includes not only the regular judges like RuPaul and Michelle, but also all of the guest judges. And with so many judges and different people coming and going, you can imagine that there is a lot of work that needs to be done to make sure the judges look camera ready. 
However, what you may not know is that often the judge's reactions and comments are not as real as they appear, and they are often filmed at different times to the actual runway. For example, Art Simone from Drag Race Down Under shared on her show Kick-Ons that on her season, for the talent show in episode 7, the contestants had to film their talent show numbers really early in the morning for some reason. But because it was so early, the judges, namely RuPaul, Michelle and Reese Nicholson, hadn't had time to go and have their hair and makeup done yet. So according to Art, while they were filming their talent show numbers, the judges were sitting there, but they were in their dressing gowns and none of them were in drag or in hair and makeup. And so later on, once the judges had had hair and makeup done, the judges had to go back to the main stage and film fake reaction shots that they then interspersed into the talent show to make it look like it was all filmed at the same time, even though they were actually filmed at totally different times. And other queens have also said similar things to back this up. For example, when I interviewed Coco Jumbo, also from Drag Race Down Under Season 1, she said that production lost the audio of her lip sync against Art Simone, and they had to refilm the whole thing days later. And they also had to refilm the judges' reactions and comments several days after the original runway. I'll put a link in the description to the full clip of Coco talking about this, and make sure you check it out because it was really interesting. Edited out inappropriate jokes. We all know that humour is a big part of Drag Race, and a lot of the queens have delivered some amazing jokes over the years on the show. But it's also true that drag queens can sometimes have quite an unfiltered sense of humour, which doesn't always go down well and ends up being cut out of the episode. One example of this comes from Katia on season 7. Katia once admitted in a review video on her YouTube channel that she made an inappropriate joke on the main stage and they edited it out. It was during episode 6, where the main challenge was the Rue Hollywood stories, and the runway theme was Death Becomes Her. Katia won that episode and said that she was quote, completely caught off guard. And apparently RuPaul asked Katia how she felt winning the challenge, and Katia made a joke and said, quote, Well, it was a long battle with leukemia, but at least I was surrounded by friends and family. And apparently the joke completely fell flat and no one laughed, and no one was looking at Katia, presumably because they all felt really awkward. And so that joke was cut out of the episode. We've also heard similar things from other contestants too. For example, Evie Oddly, who was the winner of season 11, when she was filming her winning speech at the finale, Evie originally made a joke and said, quote, go eat a baby. And this was apparently a running joke that Evie had said throughout the season. But apparently RuPaul and the producers didn't laugh and thought it sounded inappropriate, so they made her refilm her winning speech, and instead she said, quote, let your freak frag fly. Why RuPaul can't host Canada's Drag Race? RuPaul has been hosting Drag Race since it first started in 2009, and he and Michelle have hosted not only Drag Race US, but also Drag Race UK and Drag Race Down Under. And so some people were curious as to why RuPaul and Michelle don't host Canada's Drag Race, which is the other English-speaking franchise that RuPaul and Michelle do not host. And although there has never been an official reason given as to why RuPaul doesn't host Canada's Drag Race, there are a few theories that seem to be pretty believable. The first theory is that when Canada's Drag Race first started being filmed, sometime in late 2019, RuPaul was busy filming her show, AJ and the Queen, which was being filmed around the same time. The other theory, though, is a bit more interesting, which is that there is a rule in Canada which limits non-Canadians from being involved in Canadian TV shows. There is a rule in Canadian TV and radio called Canadian Content, which is also known as CanCon. And the rule states that, quote, radio and television broadcasters, including cable and satellite specialty channels, must produce and or broadcast a certain percentage of content that was at least partially written, produced, presented or otherwise contributed to by persons from Canada. The rule also means that Canadian productions get more financial funding if they are hosted by Canadians. And so that may be why Brooklyn Heights was chosen to be the host, because she is originally from Canada. Fake green screen messages. 
Drag Race is no stranger to a green screen and they are often used during acting challenges so that they can superimpose the queens onto different backgrounds. And there were even rumours that RuPaul was not really there in person for Drag Race Down Under Season 1 and that he was green screened in. However, this rumour was debunked by several contestants such as Coco Jumbo when I interviewed her. And they even joked about this on the second season of Drag Race Down Under when RuPaul slapped Spanky Jackson to prove that he was really there in person. However, some queens have admitted that there were some green screen moments on Drag Race that were actually fake and that they were put in by production. For example, you may remember on Drag Race US Season 14, Jennifer Lopez made a guest appearance during Episode 4 because the runway theme that week was Night of a Thousand JLo's. However, Season 14 contestant Bosco once revealed at a Roscoe's viewing party that they didn't actually see JLo on screen and it was just a green screen. But the producers read out what JLo had said and the queens had to react to what she was saying even though they never actually saw the real footage until later. And Trinity the Tuck, who was also at the same Roscoe's viewing party, said that the same thing happened on All Stars 7 when they had Kennedy Davenport's video message for the roast episode. And all the contestants saw was a green screen and they didn't actually see Kennedy's video at all. And Trinity joked that that's why all the queens looked confused when that moment happened because all they could see was an empty green screen. Something similar also happened on Drag Race UK Season 2, which famously got shut down partway through the season due to the COVID-19 pandemic which had just started. And the contestants have admitted that the video message that we saw of RuPaul was clearly filmed afterwards. And in real life, what happened was that the contestants were called over to the TV screen and they had to pretend that they were watching a real video message. And then one of the production staff came out and read out what the video message was going to be and then told them all that the production was going to shut down. But then they added in RuPaul's video message in post-production. So there you go, there were 8 backstage production secrets from RuPaul's Drag Race that show you that what you see isn't always the truth. Did you know about any of these production secrets before? And which one surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to all of my amazing Patreon members. In the You're a Winner Baby tier, we have Emerald1508 and PC Smush. And then in the Shantae You Stay tier, we have Becky, Charlie, David, Emma, Kylie, Max, Tebby, and Craig. Thank you all so much for your incredible ongoing support. It really does make such a massive difference to my channel and it allows me to keep making videos for you all. So thank you all so, so much. If you'd like to join my Patreon and get exclusive benefits, such as early access to my videos, shout outs in my videos, as well as priority access when submitting interview questions, among other benefits, you can join my Patreon for just a few dollars a month to unlock these amazing benefits, and I'll put a link in the description. Please make sure you like, comment, and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!